Hey everyone, today in this video I'm going to show you 8 small but unique projects that cover everything you would need to master vanilla JavaScript in general. Now understanding how vanilla JavaScript works is very essential before you dive into any other framework or library like React, Angular, Vue, etc. Most interviews in big tech companies also prefer taking the front end round interviews in vanilla JavaScript because it indicates whether or not the candidate has a proper grasp over JavaScript as a whole. It's always important to remember that if you know vanilla JavaScript, then you can learn any other JavaScript related framework without too much trouble. Now before we start, I just want to let you know that I will be attempting to solve all the 8 projects mentioned in this video in my upcoming videos. So stay tuned for that and you can take reference from those videos anytime you get stuck while trying to implement the projects on your own. Without any further delay, let's get on with it. Number 1. Implement a star rating widget. Here's a demo of what you need to build. There are mainly going to be three different states of the UI. First is the default state which will display the stars in their normal form. Second is whenever you hover on any star, it should change the color of the particular star being hovered as well as all the stars that are present before it. And when you stop hovering, all the stars should go back to their normal state. And third is anytime you click on a star, it should change color of that particular star and all the ones behind it. But after moving your cursor away, the state shouldn't change and it should display the stars as it is. That is, with a new color from the beginning of the star till the star which had been clicked. Number 2. Implement a pixel art grid using HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. This might look complicated but it's a lot easier than what it seems like. Here's a demo of what you need to build. First of all, you need to build a 2D board. It can be of any size whether 10 by 10 or 16 by 16. It's up to you to choose. You need to implement a color picker in order to be able to choose a color to draw on the board. After picking a color, you can right click anywhere on the grid of the board and upon moving your mouse around it should fill the grids you moved your mouse over with the color you selected. Remember, this should happen only when you click and move your mouse around. And if you just click on a particular grid and leave your mouse, then it should specifically color that grid only. Lastly, you can also add a reset button to reset everything on the board presenting yourself with a clean board to start drawing again. This might look complicated, but a lot easier than what it seems like. Give it a try. Number 3. Implement a chessboard using HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. Where if you click on any of the block, it should highlight its diagonals. This is pretty self-explanatory. As you can see in the image, all you have to do is create a 2D grid matrix. To first build the chessboard and then upon clicking on any particular grid, it should highlight its possible diagonals. Number 4. Implement a tic-tac-toe game. A tic-tac-toe game might sound simple but implementing it really polishes your JavaScript knowledge. This doesn't need much of an explanation as it's pretty self-explanatory. You can implement it however you want, just make sure the general rules of tic-tac-toe are followed as shown in the example below. Number 5. Create a progress bar using HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. To build this, you need to at least know how a working progress bar looks like. All you have to do here is implement a progress bar that animates from 0 to 100% in n seconds. n seconds could be 3, 4 seconds, whatever you decide to give it. The loading animation should start after a button is clicked. And lastly, to take it a step further, you need to queue multiple progress bars if the button is clicked more than once, which means if you click the button thrice, the progress bar should do the entire loading animation thrice and the button name should change from run 1 to run 2 and then run 3 when the queued progress bar runs automatically for the third time due to your initial three clicks on the run button. Number six, implement a memory game using HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. As you can see in the examples below, you first of all need to create a fixed number of blocks, which could be of any length of your choice. Game should start on click of the start button. After the game starts, the blocks should start blinking one after the other, starting from the count of one, which is a single blink which means if you guess the position of first blink correctly, the next blink will start from a count of two, meaning that any two blocks might blink at the same time and if you guess correctly, the count becomes three in the next round and so on. The user needs to make sure to click the blocks in the same order of appearance. If user clicks are accurate, continue to the next level with the increased count, otherwise just shake the container to indicate that the click was wrong and start over again. Make sure to maintain the current score of the game during the entire process. Number 7. Implement a date picker using HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. This is pretty self-explanatory since you can refer the example below to understand the requirement. You basically need to build a date picker that contains every month, year and day similar to a calendar. 
you can switch to any date and choose between any particular date you want and whatever date you end up choosing its value should be displayed on the screen last but not the least number eight implement a day calendar using html css and javascript you need to implement a calendar that shows the events for a single day similar to the google calendar make sure that the calendar should have a 12 hours display format which is nothing but the am to pm format which means instead of writing 1 pm as 13 you need to write it as one itself and so on the important part is to handle the events clashing properly in order to display all conflicting events the events which are conflicting have been nested as you can observe in the ui also display the title and timings on the event block this challenge is ui centric therefore put maximum efforts upon displaying conflicting events the way it's been shown in the example below also the data in the blocks are nothing but an array of objects containing four properties which are start time end time color and title i will also provide the data below for your reference so that's it these eight projects will really help you level up so stay tuned for my upcoming videos where i attempt to build these eight projects as well if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe